Good morning, TMI. I don't know if you noticed, but band is here to perform for us today. Now, now they got a couple of songs for us in just a moment. We're going to do we're going to do morning prayer together with their performance. So please stand. We're in the second week of Advent. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. God welcomes our presence in his house. As we continue this Advent season and light the second Advent candle today, let us pray for our Advent journey. O oh God, our Father, as we journey through the season of Advent, we await the gift of your Son at Christmas. In the gift of Jesus, you have united our humanity with your divinity, that we may share in your life forever and give the gift of life to others. Prepare us this Advent to receive the gift of your Son, that we may follow in his footsteps and use our talents and abilities to give hope to others. All this we ask in the name of your ultimate gift, Jesus our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. And now to tell you a little bit more, Emily Lawitz, tell us about the performance by the band today. Um, as uh, Father Nate said, I'm Emily, and uh, we're the <laughs> we're the team my band. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're made up of seventh graders all the way through twelfth graders, and um, I know that this band has been an awesome blessing in my life as it has been to all of us. And um, we're going to play Foiled Again, which is a tribute to cartoon villains. <coughs> and then we're going to play 13 Days of Christmas, which is a parody of the 12 Days of Christmas. And uh, we're really excited to play for y'all. We hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
incredible job, TMI Band. And uh, if you want more of that, there's more where that came from. Thursday night at 7, is that when, when y'all are performing? Right here in this chapel, Thursday night at 7. Come on back and hear some more. And now for a reading from Scripture. Three readings on giving gifts from the Christian Scripture. From the letter to the Romans. But God's gracious gift is not like our transgression. For if the many died through the transgression of the one man, how much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, multiply to the many? And God's gift is not like the one who sinned. For judgment resulting from one transgression led to condemnation. But God's gracious gift from the many failures led to justification. For if by the transgression of the one man death reigned through that one person, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in the life through one man, Jesus Christ? From the letter to the Ephesians, you are saved by God's grace because of your faith. This salvation is God's gift. It's not something you earned. It's not something you did that you can be proud of. Instead, we are God's craftsmanship, created in Jesus Christ to do good works. God planned in advance for these good things to be the way that we live our lives. From the, letter of, from the first letter of Peter, serve each other according to the gift of each person has received, as good managers of God's diverse gifts. Whoever speaks should do so as those who speak God's word. Whoever serves should do so from the strength that God furnishes. Do this so that in everything God may be honored through Jesus Christ. To him be honor and power forever and ever, always. Amen. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me. Lord God, we thank you so much for people who are willing to share their gifts with others. We thank you for all the gifts you've given us. As we think about gifts right now, pray that you'd pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, drive far from us anything that distracts us from you. Show us how we can use the gifts you've given us to share your love with others. In your name we pray. Amen. So, uh, just real quick, wanted to uh, once again thank the band for sharing your gifts. Thank you guys. And because Hannah Cooper Macaulay talked about sharing her gifts with the world on Friday, great job. And because you guys have been bold enough to share your gifts here today, I want to talk a little bit about gift giving. We are in nearly in Christmas, the season of giving gifts. We are in Advent actually right now as we prepare for the arrival of God's ultimate gift made flesh, Jesus Christ, right? And as we enter into this season of gift giving, I want to think about this. Why do we give gifts. If you step back for a moment, a minute, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit weird. It's a little bit countercultural even, because in our culture, everything's supposed to be bought and sold for a price. I give you something so that you can give me something in return. Usually I give you money, you give me my mocha latte or whatever it is, but usually we don't operate on a gift economy. We operate on a you give, I get economy. But that's not how gifts work. We give gifts to others, usually not so that we can get something out of it. Think about the best gift you've ever given to somebody. What was it that made that gift so meaningful? Did you give it to them just so that you could get something out of it? I mean, like, did you give them a gift hoping that they'd give you a better gift in the future? I, I hope you didn't. Did you give it to them thinking you'd get something out of it? No. No. That gift, whatever that gift is that you gave, the favorite gift that you've ever given, you probably gave it just because you loved that person and wanted to see their experience, the look on their face, how much they enjoyed that as you gave that gift to them, how their eyes widened open and how they just experienced that as, as, as a um, concrete instance of pure love. Because that's what a true gift is. It's a concrete instance instance of pure love given to give joy and life to someone else that touches at the very heart of the good news that christians proclaim next slide please in advent we celebrate that christ is god's gift to us a concrete instance a flesh and blood human in whom all the fullness of God dwells, so that God, who is invisible and untouchable, can suddenly become touchable and visible and hearable, who can reach out to us and heal us. Christ is God's ultimate gift 
to us, and we await that in the season of Advent. The interesting thing, though, is that in us, Christ gives back to the Father. In us, Christ makes us alive by the power of his spirit. Christ raises us to new life. Christ forgives us everything that we messed up on, all the ways that we failed, all the ways that we've fallen short. He forgives us of all of that. He wipes the slate clean so that we can live in newness of life. And that newness of life allows us to give back to the Father. How do we do that? We do that by doing what we do best. We do that by, by doing what you do. We do that by using our gifts and our talents and our passions to become fully alive, to find out what it is that sets us on fire, whether that is, is taking a photograph, whether that is playing an instrument, whether that is writing a poem, whether or not that is, is, is finding a, a new aspect of, of this wonderful creation that we live in, whether that is, is, is lifting a weight. Finding those things that tie in with your gifts and your talents that make you fully alive. Because the really interesting thing is, whenever you find someone who has tapped into their gifts and their talents and their abilities, when you find someone who is fully and truly alive, that automatically makes other people alive. Think about your experience of hearing uh, Hannah Cooper Macaulay talk on Friday. She shared something from the depths of her being, something that makes her fully alive, something that opens up a whole new world for her and in turn, for many of you in this room, it opened up a whole new world for you to see how a passion for something can change the way you experience the everyday. There was a uh, second century saint named St. Irenaeus. He said this, the glory of God is humanity fully alive. God's glory is not in us groveling before God, God's glory is not in just our, our, our rigid obedience. God the Father is like your parents giving you a gift on Christmas, seeing your eyes light up, seeing you become fully alive. God has given you the gift of yourself, the gift of your talents and your abilities. To see you become so fully alive, that makes the Father's eyes light up. To see the joy in your life, that makes God fully alive. So as we await Christmas, as we go through all the rituals of shopping and finding gifts, remember that the essence of a gift is that whatever gift that makes you fully alive can be given to the world and make others fully alive. Whether that gift is in music or art or science or literature or sports, Whatever it is that makes you fully alive, God has given you that as a gift to share that gift with others and make others fully alive as well. So with that, may you become fully alive and may you share that life with others. Amen. Please stand for prayers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Come, O come, Emmanuel, and be with us. Kindle us in the fire of your love. Energize our weary hearts. Prepare us to journey with you on pilgrimage. And as your advent, may we rejoice with the apostles, the prophets, martyrs, and mystics who forever praise you in union with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We welcome your advent, O Lord, and thank you for the infinite ways you are present with us in our families, in our friendships, in our opportunities, and in our challenges. And so we pray. Come, O come, Emmanuel. We welcome your advent, O Lord, and ask you to be present in the world around us. May your kingdom come in our nation, in our culture, in our religion, and in this community. And so we pray. Come, O come, Emmanuel. We welcome your advent, O Lord, and ask you to be present among those who we care for, for those we need, and even among our enemies, that we may all be healed by your grace and mercy. And so we pray. Come, O come, Emmanuel. We welcome your advent, O Lord, and ask you to be present in our hopes and in our fears, in good times and in bad, in our tasks and trials. And so we pray. Come, O come, Emmanuel. And now, O Emmanuel, God with us, we ask you to be present in our specific needs.
Lord God, we give you thanks that Coach Gertz is back at home recovering. We pray that you would speed his recovery and bring him back to us safe and sound. We also pray for Anita, Anita Martinez, aunt to, great aunt to Miss Perez and Dr. Laporte, who passed away last night. We pray that you would welcome her into your arms of mercy and raise her to that life that has no end. Give peace and comfort to those who mourn for her. And now, collecting all of our prayers and praises together as one, we are bold to pray in the words of Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God fill you with his, his gifts of love and hope and peace and joy that you may be a gift to others. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. For our first announcement, before all the other announcements come up, we have an announcement from our, uh, from our headmat. Well, do you want to go first, uh, Scott, or Family Association? Let's do uh, Father Scott first and then Family Association. what they think is a cyst or some kind of tumor on one of his kidneys. And so tomorrow they're going to take that cyst out. It is contained. It's nowhere else. They're, um, they're not using the C word at this point. They're just looking at this cyst on his kidney that needs to come out. There's a possibility in that that he may have to have one of his kidneys removed in this operation, which is tomorrow morning. Um, you can live functionally and very well with one kidney. Um, tomorrow morning we will know a lot more about Coach Gertz, or tomorrow we will. So he gave me his sister's phone number. I'll get updates from her tomorrow. He's having this. This is a pretty major surgery. He'll be in the hospital for at least a week after surgery, so he won't be back for the rest of this um, semester, but we keep Coach Gertz in our prayers. Again, I share this with his permission, so you all now know what we're praying for Coach Gertz about, and we pray that it's just a simple little cyst tomorrow, and it comes out, and his kidney stays in, and everything's fine and dandy. And I may not have an update for you in chapel because his surgery is tomorrow morning, but as soon as I get an update, I'll give that to you the best way that I can. Okay? Thanks. Now our family association has a presentation. They're going to call some folks up here. Whenever you, if your name gets called, I'd ask you to please come around this side, around the band, and uh, we got something special for you. Good morning, TMI family. My name is Kristen Jackson, and this is Stephanie Pegg, and we are here to represent the Family Association. Each year, the Family Association thanks and honors our teachers through teacher wish lists, and this year we have the recipients. Mark Felipe. <laughs> Eric Drake, you got two. Kelly Meyer. Thank you. Stay, stay up there, guys, for a picture. Stay up. This is stay up there for a picture. Sherry Lim, two. <laughs> Sophia Gonzalez. And Jill Cross. Association to everybody. Make room, make room. Three, two, one. Thank you, Family Association. All right, I got four minutes, four minutes remaining uh, for other announcements. 